Welcome back to Chapter 8. Uh, chapter 8 is on conic sections, which is, uh, I think, kind of fun. Uh, it's different than what we've been doing so far, um, not only this year, but in the past number of years, you've worked with functions. Conic sections are not functions, so we get to get into something that's just a little bit bigger than what we've been dealing with before. Um, in this section, we're going to see what conic sections are, and then we're going to have a new look at some parabolas. Now, you might think that, wait, no, you know everything to know about parabolas. I mean, we've been working on them since Algebra 1. Um, that's not exactly true. We have been working with quadratic functions whose graph is a parabola, but parabolas are bigger than that. So we'll see what those are. Our learning targets today, we'll find the vertex focus directrix and focal width of parabolas. Uh, we'll graph parabolas, we'll find equations of a parabola satisfying given conditions, and we'll prove that the graph of an equation is a parabola. And then we'll solve application problems involving parabolas. So lots of parabolic activity. Um, so before we get into parabolas, what are conic sections? Well, conic is from cone. So these all involve cones and specifically cutting a cone. Um, if we cut a cone that's just like sitting on a desk, if we cut it horizontally, we get a circle. If we cut it at an angle like that, we get this oval, which is an ellipse. If we cut it parallel to the side, so like that, like this cut is parallel to the, the side of the cone, we get that shape, which is in fact a parabola. Uh, and then if we cut it vertically, so straight up and down, we're gonna get this thing that looks kind of like a parabola, but it's not. This is actually called a hyperbola. In fact, this isn't all of a hyperbola because this isn't actually all of a cone. Cones aren't just this shape. In fact, this is half of a cone. A cone is defined as taking a line so we have a line and we're going to pivot it around a point. So if we pivot that around the point, we get those two. So a cone is actually what we think of as two cones connected at that point. So that hyperbola that we saw earlier, um, not only is it right down here, but it's also up here so it makes um, two different pieces now that's the only one that does that because if we cut it side if we cut it horizontally to get our circle that's not going to go into the other part of the cone if we cut it at an angle that's not going to go into the other part of the cone if we cut it parallel to get the parabola that's not going to go in the other part of the cone because it's going to continue to be parallel down here. So hyperbola is the only one that goes into both of them like that. Um, so our conic sections that we'll look at, we have circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. And these are called non-degenerate conic sections. I know it's a really big word. It's not one that you really need to know too much of, but it's non-degenerate conic sections. Um, a, a degenerate conic section um, goes through that point. So if we cut it like perpendicular or so, like horizontal, it's going to be just a point. That's not really a conic section, it's a point. Um, if we cut it perfectly along that line, then we have a line. Um, and then if we cut it going straight up and down, we have um, 
like two triangle deals. So each of these don't go through that point. If they do, it's degenerate and that's something else. It's kind of like having our quadratic, the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a equals zero. All right, that's no longer a quadratic, it's a line. So same kind of idea. Um, seeing all of the cuts at one place, we have this one will make a circle, that one will make an ellipse, this one, which is parallel to this side, will make a parabola, and that one will make a hyperbola. Um, so we have we have those. I'll try to even have it in class so you guys can kind of see it and play with it a little bit. Um, one of the things we'll be doing with these, and this isn't just with the um, parabolas that we're going to be looking at today, but it'll be with each of them, is uh, graphing them on a calculator. Now, in our calculators, you can't just type in a conic section and graph them because it graphs functions. It also graphs polar coordinates and um, parametric equations, um, which you can make this as polar. We're not getting there right now. Um, we're going to write it as a function. Um, in Desmos, you can actually just type it in as a as a conic section. It graphs it for you really quite nicely. Um, but looking at it on a calculator, what do we have to do? We have to get it to be y equals something. So if we start out with this guy right here, 5y squared equals x, we need to get it to be y equals. So divide by 5, square root. Now when we take the square root, we need a plus or minus. So we have plus or minus root x over 5. Now which is it, plus or minus? It's both. That's the key. It's both. You need to graph both the positive and the negative. So if we were to do this, we'd go in, we'd clear out what we need to. We can put this one comma negative one there, and that actually does plus or minus for us. Or we could use y1 and y2 and have it do, um, like one of them be positive, one of them be negative. It doesn't really change anything other than just gives us it in one equation. There's the first one, and there's the negative part. And that makes a parabola that's sideways. We've never seen sideways parabolas before. Our parabolas have always looked like y equals x squared. This is x equals y squared. It makes it sideways. Um, now, if you do look at this at very closely where it's um, coming together, there's a little gap there right on that x-axis. Now, there's not actually a gap in the function. That's a um, an issue with how the calculator calculates it, um, because it goes and the next value over would be non-existent because we'd end up with the square root of a negative number. Um, and so it graphs a series of points and connects the dots, and it won't get all the way there. Here, the gap is pretty small. Uh, when we're graphing circles, ellipses, things like that, the graph can get a little bit bigger. So, as I said, that's a parabola. The vertex is at 0, 0. Uh, we'll see what the vertex is, but it's we know what the vertex of a parabola is. It's where it turns around. Um, and this is opening to the right. So now they can open to the right or left in addition to up or down. In fact, they can even be rotated to open in any direction, at any angle. Those would be oblique parabolas. Um, we're not looking at those today. So you don't have to worry about those quite yet, but know that they do exist. Um, let's try this one. We have x squared equals y squared plus 9. We have to solve for y. So subtract 9. Square root gives us plus or minus. And remember, the square root of x squared minus 9 is not x minus 3. It is just the square root of x squared minus 9. So graphing it. We 
we go back, we can keep these this one common negative one. Notice those are with the the curved brackets. Those are the second parentheses. And then just type in x squared minus 9. And graph it. And this is a weird looking shape here, but it's still coming. There's the negative half of it. And so notice this one has two. It looks kind of like a parabola, but there's two of them. That's a hyperbola. And it isn't just like two parabolas. There are fairly big differences, um, but they do kind of look like it. Uh, with this, you can notice that gap at the x-axis in both places. Remember, that's not actually a gap. It does connect there. So this is hyperbola. The center here is at 0, 0. That's right in the center of it. Um, it opens horizontally because it's both left and right. Um, we have some vertices. There's two of them in a hyperbola, and they'll be exactly where you think they are as far as like what we know about vertices for parabolas. They're at the turning points. Um, in this case, they're at negative 3 and 0 and positive 3, 0. Um, so what is a parabola? We know all there is to know about parabolas, right? It's, it's a quadratic. No. No, it's not. Um, parab parabolas, and in fact, all conic sections are defined um, as a distance. A like a circle is the, the, all the points that are equidistant from that center point. A parabola is all points that are equidistant from a fixed point called a focus and a line called a directrix. So we have a focus right over here. We have this directrix over here, and every point on this parabola is going to be the same distance. So those two distances, m and n, are the same. That's for every single point on the parabola. Um, notice the distance to m, or this m, this is going to be a 90 degree, so as the point moves over here, that line would be over there. It's always perpendicular to the directrix. So, but m will equal n for every single point. Um, because of this, we can use the distance formula to come up with an equation of a parabola. Um, and we'll actually do an example where we see that. It's not the only way of doing it, but it can be nice and you can actually derive the formula for a parabola like the equation from that as well um, so before we get too far into the um, algebra what are the uses of parabolas and more specifically paraboloids a paraboloid is like a three-dimensional parabola if we took the parabola and just rotated it so we had like a dish or a bowl that's a paraboloid um, and being that we live in a three-dimensional world, we're going to use the three-dimensional ones more than the two-dimensional ones. So, what are some uses of these? Um, this is a parabolic heater. And what it does is it has a heating element right here that's at the focus. What happens with parabolas is that anything from the focus is going to radiate out to the surface of the parabola or paraboloid and it's going to reflect straight away so the cool thing about this heater is if you put your hand just aside like you actually you feel like a wave of heat it's kind of like a fan where if you step like half a foot to the side you don't feel it then you can step into it it's like that, but with heat. It's crazy. Um, a parabolic microphones. This is the same thing, but backwards. In a parabolic microphone, the dish, this dish, is not the microphone. It's just a reflective surface. The microphone is right here, and it sits at the focus, pointed back into the dish. 
and all the sound waves come in and get reflected to the microphone, which takes a big area of sound waves and concentrates it. Um, satellite dishes, same exact idea. The receiver is this thing right here that's sitting at the focus. We have all these rays coming in from space, hitting the dish, and then they all bounce straight to the receiver, allowing us to get high definition signals from space because we're collecting an area of it. A flashlight, same thing. This bulb should be at about the focus. All the light bounces and then goes straight out the flashlight, um, which is why we get a beam. On flashlights that look kind of like this, where you can kind of rotate it to adjust the beam on how, how tight you want it, how much of a floodlight you want it. What that does is it pulls the light in, like the light bulb in or pushes it out. So it's moving it away from where the focus is. And so all of a sudden it's not all going out in a straight line. It's, it's going out at angles, which gives you a wider, um, a wider view um, because the the light the angle of the light is wider so you can see more but it's more diffused so parabolas what are they we have some horizontal parabolas and we'll have vertical parabolas the vertical parabolas are the ones that we already know a bit about because those are actually functions Vertical parabolas are the only conic sections, the non-degenerate ones, that are functions. So a horizontal parabola is going to look kind of like this. Now this one opens to the right. Um, it could be flipped over and open to the left. Um, vertical ones open up or could be reflected opening down. Um, they have a focus. The focus is that point that's inside the parabola. The closer the focus is to the vertex, the wider the parabola is. We have a directrix. The directrix is that line. Um, and then the distance from the directrix to the vertex and from the vertex to the focus. Oh, so the vertex is exactly where we think it would be. And then anyway, so the distance from the focus to the vertex and the vertex to the directrix is the same because the distance from any point on the parabola to the focus and that point to the directrix is the same. The vertex is going to be that shortest distance. And that we call P. Um, P, that distance, is called the focal length. We have something called the focal width as well. The focal width is the line. It's the chord because it goes from part of the parabola to another part of the parabola. And it's going to be parallel to the directrix and it goes through the focus. The focal width is actually 4p. Now p could be positive or negative though. Um, in these cases they're positive. If it opened to the left or it opened down, p would be negative um, because p is the directional, like the directed length from between the vertex and the focus. So the focal width is actually just a distance, so it's going to be the absolute value of 4p. It'll always be positive. So let's look at some equations. Um, 
so for the horizontal one, this is centered at the origin. We have y squared equals 4px. Now I've seen some places that make it like x equals something with y squared. Um, our text doesn't, it puts the squared by itself. So we have y squared equals 4px. Um, if we want to move the vertex, it's the whole h and k thing. We've seen this with parabolas before. The x turns into x minus h. The y turns into y minus k. Um, and you might be thinking that, wait a second, way back when, when we looked at parabolas, we had y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Right, that's the vertex form, where a, oh, a is 4p. That's kind of nice. Um, this plus k, like, it was always kind of weird, because it was always x minus h. Like, every translation was x minus, x minus, x minus, and we just added k. Why is it plus k? It's because we already solved for y. This would be a y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. So it's actually subtraction for both of them. We just added the k over to the other side. So here, being that it has to be squared, we keep it over there anyway. Um, the focus. So the focus is going to be p away from the vertex in a horizontal direction. So we're just gonna add p to the x value. And if the vertex is at 0, 0, then it's just p comma 0. If it's at hk, it's h plus p comma k. We just add it to the x value. If p is negative, it would end up going backwards. Because if it was negative 1, then we're going to be 1 to the left of h. So we don't even need to worry about a separate equation for that. We just need to know if p is positive or negative. The directrix is just the other direction. It's going to be h minus p. And being that it's a line, it'll be x equals h minus p. So if the vertex is at 0, 0, it's just x equals negative p. If the vertex is at hk, it's going to be x equals h minus p. And then the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is going to be... Um, that same line in a horizontal one, the axis of symmetry will be horizontal and it goes through the y part of the vertex. So it'll be just y equals the y part of the vertex. So if the vertex is at zero, zero, it's y equals zero. It's the x axis. If the vertex is at h comma k, it's y equals k. How about for the vertical ones? Same thing except backwards. So we have x squared equals 4py. Again, sometimes it's y equals 1, 4, 1 over 4p times x squared, where 1 over 4p would be that a value. Or we can change where the um, change where the vertex is. hk, notice again it's x minus h and y minus k. Those don't switch. The H is always associated with X. The Y is always associated with K. Um, the the um, what is squared, however, changes. Um, the focus, we're going to go up or down now. And so it'll be the K plus zero or K plus P. So if it's at zero, zero, it'll be zero comma P. If it's hk, we'll have h comma k plus p. The directrix now is a horizontal line, so it's y equals, um, and then it's just whatever the vertex is, y equals uh, negative p, because we're going backwards. So y equals negative p, or y equals k minus p. And then the axis of symmetry is vertical line, so it'll be x equals the x part of the vertex, so either 0 or x equals h. So those are 
a lot of the equations then again p is always the focal length and the focal width is always the absolute value of 4p that doesn't change for any of these so what are we going to do with the parabolas we can use the distance formula to write the equation of a parabola with a given focus and directrix um, now again you don't need to use the distance formula all the time but it can sometimes it's important especially if you have a focus and a directrix so if we have focus of uh, 0 comma negative 5 and a directrix of y equals 5 we need some points to find the distance one of the points is going to be 0 comma negative 5 the point on the line will be just x y well on the parabola will be x comma y and then we need a point on the directrix because we're going to have the distance between x, y, and 0, negative 5 has to equal the distance from x, y to the directrix. Well, that's a point on a line. If you remember, it'll always be perpendicular to the line. So it will share the same x value or the same y value. Being that this is y equals 5, it will share the same x value. Since we're at x comma y, this point will be at x comma 5. We can plug this into a distance formula. So we have the distance between the focus and our x, y point. So x minus 0 squared plus y minus negative 5 squared will equal the distance between x, y and x comma 5. So we have x minus x squared plus y minus 5 squared. We can square both sides, because if the stuff underneath the square roots, if we have a square root equals a square root, that means the stuff underneath the square roots has to be equal. So x squared plus y plus 5 squared will equal 0 plus y minus 5 squared. Multiply the stuff out. So we have x squared plus y squared plus 10y plus 25 equals y squared minus 10y plus 25 because remember y plus 5 squared does not equal y squared plus 5 squared it's y plus 5 times y plus 5 don't be that guy uh, we can simplify first of all the y squareds cancel in a parabola only one of our variables is squared it's either x squared or y squared it's not both um, 25s also cancel because we have plus 25 and, my, and plus 25. So we can combine our like terms. So by subtracting 10y to get x squared equals negative 20y squared. Um, and this would be our equation here. We have a vertex of 0, 0. The focal length, that p value, remember the negative 20 equals 4p. So p equals negative 5, which makes sense if the vertex is 0, 0, and the focus is at 0, negative 5. We had to go 5 over. Um, and we could have actually seen the vertex was 0, 0, because it's halfway in between negative 5 and positive 5 as well. Um, so we have x squared equals negative 20y, um, which could be y equals negative 120th x squared. That's like the kind that we are used to seeing this is vertical um, it's opening down which that negative p-value tells us um, so but this one is how the answer generally looks um, we can write an equation in standard form of from a graph so things to notice the vertex is it 0, 0? And here it gives us the directrix, which means that that distance is 2. Notice it's counting by 2s. So P will be 2, which means the focus, if we needed it, would be right there. But since that's 2, P equals 2. And the vertex is 0, 0, being that our equation and it's going horizontal, 
which means it'll be x squared equals 4py. If p is 2, that means we'll have x squared equals 8y. Or starting out there, plug it in. Yes, y squared, because y equals x squared is vertical. <sighs> That's a bummer. I'm going to erase. Uh, da, 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 da. We didn't see that. y squared equals 4px which means y squared will equal 8x. Yes, that's what I meant to say from the beginning. Um, so, we have y squared equals 8x. So I did it right there. Um, so, you know, this brings up a great point. Make sure you're checking yourself. Wouldn't want to do something horrible like switch your x and your y and square the wrong thing. I don't know anyone that would ever do that. So, um, yep. What else are we going to do with parabolas? Um, write an equation in standard form if we have a vertex and a focus. So, the focus, notice it's 8 to the left which means p equals negative 8, which we can plug in. Being that it's to the left, we have the y squared, or like there's that, or y squared equals 4px. Plug in the negative 8 for p, and you get y equals negative 32, y squared equals negative 32x. So a lot of times just finding that p value is all you really need to do and making sure you know which way it's going. And the vertex too, I suppose. So find the vertex value of p, axis, symmetry, focus, and directrix, then graph. So we have y plus 1 equals 1 16th x minus 2 squared, which could be x minus 2 squared times 16, or e x minus 2 squared equals 16 times y plus 1. We could multiply that 16 over. Um, but this one, notice it's x equals y equals x squared. It's y equals x squared, which is a function type parabola. It's going to open vertically. It's positive, so it'll be opening up. So, what do we need to find? Vertex. H comma K is 2 comma negative 1. Remember, it's Y minus K and X minus H. So we have to change the sign on both of them. So we have vertex is 2 comma negative 1. The value of P is 4 because 4 times 4 equals 16, right? It's 4P equals 16. So P equals 4. The axis of symmetry, x equals 2. Since it's a vertical parabola, the axis of symmetry is vertical. Um, and it goes through the, the x part of the vertex, so x equals 2. The focus, we're going to have to add p to the y value. So instead, it's negative 1 plus 4. So it'll be a 3. So we have 2 comma 3. The directrix, we subtract the p value from the that y value of the vertex. So negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, so it'll be y equals negative 5. Notice the axis of symmetry and the directrix are perpendicular. One's x equals, the other's y equals. Uh, then graph it. So we have our vertex is at 2 comma negative 1. We have our focus. Is at 2 comma 3. The directrix is at y equals negative 5. And the parabola will go like that. Um, you can always graph an extra point. The distance since the focal width is 4p. So this distance is 4p. Notice that this distance 
is 2p. 2p. So that's a good way of checking without actually having to find other points. Um, you go from the focus. You already know p. That's how you found the focus. Just go each direction 2p and graph a point, and that can help guide that parabola. So um, this was an introduction to conic sections and a new look at parabolas. Um, we will continue looking at circles and ellipses and then hyperbolas in the next couple. Um, I will see you in class, but until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.